Hi, uh, this is Dr. Shovik Sengupta from Kolkata, and I am heading the Molecular Biology Department in Medica Super Specialty Hospitals in Kolkata. Historically, clinicians have seen that uh, for a single disease, there are a few drugs. Now, let's say if you have disease X and a drug Y, this drug Y uh, is going to work good or very good on some patients. It's going to work moderately on some patients and it's not going to work in some patients. So that effectively means that the drug is not bad. It's just that how the human body is responding to that particular drug. Now, so far as oncology is concerned, in oncology, we have basically two types of chemo drugs. One is the standard non-targeted killer therapy and the other is the molecularly targeted therapy. Now, in both these cases, how a drug will be efficient in a particular body depends on a lot of factors. One is the bioavailability of that particular drug to the uh, site of the disease. Two, how the body is going to respond to the toxicity levels of that drug, how the bone marrow is going to respond. All these questions come up. So personalized medicine is basically a concept of deciding a particular chemotherapy pattern for a particular individual. What personalized medicine means is when a person has a disease like cancer, then even if there are first line or second line therapy module, modules available, personalized medicine makes sure that that particular model will be best effective for that particular person. In insurance companies have basically worked this out and they have seen that cost-wise also, if these uh, tests are done beforehand, it actually saves on the, uh, uh, the medicine uh, cost that comes up. Number one, personalized medicine wants to make sure that the therapy that is uh, used on that person is not wasted. I mean, that is the essence of personalized medicine. And number two, um, personalized medicine wants to ensure that the medicine that has been used on the patient gives the maximum efficacy. These two are the key important points of personalized medicine in oncology. Uh, with the Indian scenario, you mean? Um, see, US, most of the patients till now is basically insurance covered. Of course, the number of uninsured patients in US is rising by the day, and that's why here uh, all about the Obamacare or the, or the new Medicare policies. But the bottom line is that a diagnostic or a theranostic test, we, we nowadays use the word theranostic instead of diagnostic, which means the therapy is actually based on these certain uh, factors. Now, what happens in US is a hospital rolls out its individual protocol for a particular management. Let's take the example of a lung cancer. Um, let's say a hospital protocolizes that a lung cancer patient ending up in that hospital will be treated in a particular fashion based on the research that has been done, based on the uh, medical science that has uh, grown up with, with time, based on the clinical expertise. So everybody sits there for a meeting. It's generally called the Institutional Review Board meeting, IRB. Once it passed through that, that protocol is followed. So when personalized medicine even gets into that, that goes into that particular protocol. So all the patients going to that particular hospital are taken care of by that particular protocol. Here in India, the situation is very patient-centric and doctor-centric. Here, the existence of protocol, uh, or rather the non-existence of protocol, is, is the main, main thing in India. I have not seen a hospital where for every individual disease a proper protocol has been panned out by that particular doctor. Because here in the hospitals even, you have visiting consultants coming in, you have uh, full-time doctors in that particular department. So there is no communication, um, a proper sense of communication to design a particular protocol therapy uh, for a particular disease. So personalized medicine uh, is actually thrown out of the window uh, here. And sometimes we see cases where we could have helped the patient better. The patient could have done much better. 
with a certain management protocol. But because the, the, the therapy has actually dependent on the whims of a particular individual, or not exactly whims, the knowledge base of a particular individual, uh, so you don't have a chance to actually practice personalized medicine uh, to give a coverage of, of all the patients that's, that, that are coming or ending up to a hospital. When personalized medicine concept first started coming in, the first question that was asked by the clinicians is the statistical numbers. Now, medical science to a lot extent is actually dependent on the statistical numbers. We want to calculate if we give X drug to a patient uh, or a group of patients, how many of them will have lower mortality rates, lower morbidity rates, etc. Now, even with that, even with all the standardized first line, second line chemo protocols that we have or the therapeutic protocols that we have, the, at the end of the day, the management asks to do one thing, to remove the tumor cells from the body. It can be done in basically three different ways. One is killed, ablate the tumor cells from the body by surgery, give them cytotoxic drugs so that the cells actually die, or burn that area with radiotherapy. So these are the three basic modalities of treatment from a layman's perspective. Now, several companies who had been doing personalized medicine had been running clinical trials. And I'll give you an example. Ovarian cancer, uh, or gynecological cancers, for example, have an average median recurrence time of 18 months. Now, if a patient comes back within the first six months of the last therapy, the patient is considered to be a non-responder to chemotherapy. If the patient comes after six months, we consider that patient responder. Even with a, uh, with a responder, 18 months is the average time when the patient actually recurs back with the disease. That doesn't mean that we will not find patients who actually come back after five years. Whatever it is, when the patient comes back, the chemotherapy that we start giving um, is basically empirical. And immediately the patient's body gives away and ultimately the patient dies. So personalized medicine, statistical analysis has shown this, that this median recurrence time interval could actually be increased a lot. This is called, in, in technical terms, it is called TTR, or time to recurrence. So personalized medicine takes care of TTR, time to recurrence, uh, PFS, or progression-free survival, and three, overall survival. So all the companies that have launched personalized medicine concept with their clinical trials have shown that statistically, the numbers are exciting. With personalized medicine, one can actually give a person a much better quality of life. Rural India and urban India, I mean, no matter uh, what people might say or what the politicians might say or uh, any politically correct statement would say, it's a humongous divide. Um, not only, um, I can tell you from my perspective, I come from Calcutta and I can tell you safely that if uh, uh, within a few kilometers of the city, the entire structure changes, like the socio-economic infrastructure to the psychological uh, things, it all changes, the understanding towards life changes. So one of the things that we, we understand and we know that the per capita income of rural India is of course lower than the urban India. Now personalized medicine is coming in the name of some genetic tests in India and they are priced at such a high level right now. Let's forget about rural India, it is not also possible for all the middle class population to actually avail of these tests and the therapeutic management techniques. So from a pure research standpoint, what I understand is, if you have trained people who understand molecular biology and uh, phenotypical biology, cell biology, then personalized medicine cost actually can be slashed down to a, to a degree where even the rural India uh, could be catered to. That is, that is my take on the thing. So 
At this point, we need a strong government intervention into this area. So, th like, if you go to any hospital, you will, you will find a pathologist, you will find a radiologist, you will find a surgeon, you will find uh, all different disciplines, but you will not find a molecular biologist. India, every year, churns out hundreds and hundreds of molecular biologists from all the research institutes doing research on cancer or any other diseases. We have to garner them. We have to use them for actual clinical practice and that is only when rural India can be supported.